and a live look at the racing conditions as this opening weekend at Gulfstream Park West continues with an eight-race Sunday card. A little bit of rain last night. The turf, although lush and green, will not be used over the course of the next few hours here at GPW as we start the card at about 105 Eastern. Eight races today over the fast main track with the sun shining. Alfredo Alfonso, Jason Blewett joining you. So good to have you with us, everybody. And what's going on in your world, Alfredo? It's good to have you back on the show. Thank you, thank you. Um, well, we had the, this morning uh, a mix of emotion looking at the uh, Arc de Triomphe. Mm -hmm. And she enabled, she tried hard, but we were talking about she came short. Yeah, came very short. Obviously, history was trying to be made uh, about an hour and a half ago, uh, far from us over in Paris at Longchamp, where Enable was looking to become the third, first ever horse, rather, to win three consecutive Arc de Triomphe. She ran great. If you haven't seen the race, we have it for you. Hot off the press, and we will head to Longchamp to the heavy, heavy soft turf. And here we go with Enable looking for that Arc de Triomphe three-peat. Magical in second, Enable, she's now poised, she's in third position, Sotsas is next, Japan is trying to make progress down the outside, Volkgeist is next, but now Magical, White Cap goes on, Enable in second place, she's two lengths behind, 400 meters to go, here's Japan and also Sotsas with their challenges, Volkgeist behind those, but 300 meters to go, Enable has the lead, Sotsas in the green colors in second, Volkgeist the red down the outside, they're coming to the last first long now and it's enable in front she leads Volkgeist in second place is closing down the center Volkgeist in the red jacket is getting up he's won Pierre-Charles Boudot was one of Volkgeist beats enable Sotsas was next in Japan magical soft light Kiseki Nagano gold French king Gayath then blast one piece and Fearmont is next well it wasn't to be I'm afraid but it is a V for Volkgeist Pierre-Charles Boudot on board Number two has won the had a dramatic shot on the gallop out with the grandstand of Longchamp in the background and a very jubilant camp there with Voltgeist, who pulled off the upset, denying Enable over ground. Alfredo listed as very soft and very heavy. She ran a race, just got outrun and was second best. Yes, and Frankie put her in the right position. Uh, he has strike at the right time, but she, she came short in the last four long. What a champion, though. She will be forever. I know her bid for history came up just a little bit short uh, earlier today in Paris. But, I mean, she will always be in the record books and in the history books for, of course, becoming the only ARC and Breeders' Cup turf winner last season. Exactly. And she's a, a daughter of uh, Galileo. Yeah. So we are going to remember Galileo also has a stallion for a long time. Yeah, no, Galileo just tremendous all the way. Would love to see a Galileo or two maybe pop up in the Pegasus World Cup turf this coming winter over at Gulfstream Park. Obviously, opening day will be f on Friday, November 29th. So if Enable never runs again, we thank her for the memories. And she is a uh, she's a horse that will last a lifetime for sure. Now, we switch gears a little bit and uh, we'll focus in on this eight race Sunday program here as day number five kicks off at about 105 Eastern at Gulfstream Park West. Two key carryovers among them, the race number two, super high five because we need seven runners and we have a cast of seven to offer the wager in the second. And the third race, of course, Alfredo starts that nice rainbow six carryover. Yes, a very difficult sequence all these days and today, especially with this change of surface. So we will try to do our best. No, this is a very competitive first race for sure. And I'm curious to see who you used in your Sunday early pick five. Again, turf out of the question today. The main track is in play. And what do you got going on in the early pick five, my friend? Well, let's see the ticket. I am opening the pick five with a single uh, the number five, Cheese Guam Mat Moma. I think she has a good experience on the dirt. She was facing tough competition before she came to this race. And I think she's going likely the winner of the opener, uh, Jason. Now, she hasn't run, of course, in quite a while. That needs to be mentioned. She's got a layoff of about 13 months. So although dropping down technically, the layoff is still a very big part of the equation. Uh, moving ahead, uh, Alfredo, I do like today's uh, fifth race quite a bit. Now, that's a scheduled dirt race. I, you're three deep there. I'm very curious to see how they bet 
and ultimately how the three Mochaccino runs. I like that horse shipping from Mammoth Park for Todd Pletcher. I mean, you, you like Mochaccino also, right? Oh, I like Mochaccino <laughs> also, yes. No, big coffee drinker. Love love my caffeine and uh, and my water for sure. Uh, that horse, uh, one of three Alfredo has to hopefully close down a winning Sunday early pick five for that $27 investment. Now, we go seven furlongs in this upcoming Sunday opener, Alfredo. We've got a field of six, and these are three and up. Philly Amare, 16000 dollar claimers tell us a little bit about the five she's one mad mama who hasn't run since september 10th of 2018 yeah but she's breathing very well and she is uh, over this uh, group in class uh, very clearly i think hyro rendon uh, will put this uh, philly close to the lead at the beginning mm -hmm. and she will be very tough to beat this afternoon Catherine O'Connell has a good winning percentage when she recovered or when she put horses uh, uh, from the um, layoff, 17%. And I think this horse is going to win this race, but let's see if maybe I'm wrong. Well, <laughs> I, well, that's uh, that's horse racing, my friend, <laughs> and that's why they call it gambling. And it's one reason we all keep coming back and love the game so much. You just never, as I like to say, never know what that next trip from the starting gate is going to bring. You've got Kathleen O'Connell in the winner's circle. I am hoping trainer Kathy Mungin can get the money with the number two gossip, uh, gossip aisle, whose overall recent form, which is what I like. She's not coming in off a layoff today. She's got good recent form. Her dirt races are solid. And I'm sure in this case with jockey Leonel Reyes, I mean, Leonel, who's a class act and a terrific young rider, you probably were aware of him back home in Venezuela, yeah. weren't you? Yes, uh, he, he won several titles um, in Valencia. Mm -hmm. That was the second uh, most important track in Venezuela. He's a very good rider. Eight wins already. He's eight for 20 this meet. Had a four-win Saturday. So his stock seems to be just rising as we continue to race here at Gulfstream West. Right. And, well, I remember that he, he rode a horse uh, for me because I was an owner in, in oh. at La Rinconada, one horse, and he rode that horse to victory in that day. Oh, and it won, too. Yes. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> His name was a Seeking Gold, the horse. Seeking gold. Seeking gold. Not seeking the gold. Not to be confused he, with he the... Was uh, a, he was a grandson of Seeking the Gold. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, great Phipps and, uh, and Chug Horse from back in the late 80s, early 90s. So the question to, to me is, or at least that I have in my mind, are we going to maybe claim a horse here in South Florida? Maybe well, at be some point. Maybe be partners? Yes, yes. If you, ha uh, uh, if you are a good capital uh, partner. I was going to say, <laughs> you put up the money and I'll pick the claim. How about that? No, <laughs> that, that's uh, that's a no bueno, everybody. Let's move on to the uh, second uh, scheduled dirt race coming up as uh, we get ready to go five and a half furlongs with this field of seven. We've got a, uh, a race that jump starts that super high five carryover. And you and I, Alfredo, uh, very much in the middle of the pack here, middle to the outside, uh, just taking that five, six, six, five exact a box. I am going to pick the six Fiamma Mama. I just think with her less distance the better she found a mile she ran fine last time in context of this field but a mile probably just a little further than she wants to run she's got an 0 for 4 record though and i will say a positive with your top pick is she's only run the one time yes and uh, both has a speed i think and mm -hmm. um, fiamma mama is reducing the distance dramatically and that will help her and She's a, a, a son of, a daughter, excuse me, of Chiru. So I think with Jaramillo, she's going to take the lead maybe at the beginning. Um, but this uh, Drills Valentine is going to be with her from the very beginning, I think so. So a very interesting race. I think it's a match between the five and six. And you get Edgar on your top pick, Drills Valentine for Antonio Sano. And then Omiseo right next door riding for Gustavo Delgado. And good to have Omiseo back with us here in Miami Gardens. Obviously, he rode yesterday out at Santa Anita Park. How good was that race between Chancelot and Omaha Beach? That was great. Yeah, it was great because Chancelot was uh, doing his stuff. He mm -hmm. was leading the race from the very beginning. And this horse is, is a champion on Maha Beach. Yeah, he's really, really good. Yeah, Richard Mandela, great job. I mean, obviously a legendary Hall of Fame trainer. We've got a lot more Alfredo coming your way. A little Rainbow Six, a late pick five, and some Breeders' Cup chatter on the other side of this quick timeout. 
The best chance for success begins with a solid foundation. At Hardacre Farm, early personal one-on-one -on -one care starts the journey to becoming a champion. Bred to leading stallions, our mares represent the highest standards. Hardacre Farm's signature in the breeding industry. Based in Ocala, Florida, breeder and owner Amy Tarrant has inspired excellence throughout her entire career. In your quest for success, start with Hardacre Farm. Breeding the champions of tomorrow. Whether you're at home or at the track, have a stake in the race when you bet with ExpressBet. Sign up for an ExpressBet online betting account and receive up to a $500 sign-up bonus. No turf racing, but a fast main track on a clear and sunny Sunday afternoon as our opening week weekend festivities continue here at Gulfstream Park West. Jason and Alfredo, good to have you with us, everybody, for the second act of this live edition of Gulfstream West today. And you and I were talking before the show started, not only watching Enable and her, her heroic second place finish, I might add, in the Arc de Triomphe, but that... That kind of sets us up and gets us amped up for the Breeders' Cup, which is less than a month away, November 1st and 2nd out at Santa Anita Park. And I like that this year, there's a pretty big team of South Florida-based horses between Gulfstream and Gulfstream Park West that are pointing to the Breeders' Cup, beginning, of course, with Safi's Math Wizard. Yes, Math Wizard came from this uh, impressive victory in the Pennsylvania Derby, uh, closing like a train in the, in the final stretch. I think he has a good opportunity to upset the race. And Stormy Embrace will be a price, but she's a quality horse for Kathleen O'Connell, pointing to the Breeders' Cup Philly Mare Sprint. In premise, did you see his race yesterday at Keeneland? Looked like he he just hasn't had a lot of, lot of luck, per se, since coming back from Royal Ascot. Well, he's a very good horse in the sprint, and... He impresses me in here at Gorsum Park with his victories, so yeah. I expect more from him. Me too, and then you've got Chancet, and hopefully I included her on the list. I think when push comes to shove, 260 is going to be in the starting gate for the BC Juvenile Phillies. Of course, Chancet is all but confirmed for the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, and it was fun as we tie a ribbon around our five horses at this point in time that are pointing to the Breeders' Cup. It was pretty great watching Chancet run all summer long. I mean, he really created a lot of a new and buzz down here, didn't he? Yes, he is a very strong horse. He has a lot of speed. That is good for his strategy. Let's see when he faced this monster from New York. Yeah, no, Barkley's <laughs> horse, uh, Tis the Law, ran really, really well yesterday, uh, winning the grade one champagne beneath jockey Manny Franco. Another round of Breeders' Cup preps up in the Big Apple, Kentucky and California. Today's kind of like the, the last dress rehearsal, if you will, and then uh, those fields, not entirely set in stone, but again, the heavy lifting will have been completed. And uh, again, if you're over at Gulfstream, you can watch and wager on all those great races throughout the country. Rainbow Six, though, let's talk about it, Alfredo. It begins with Sunday's third a scheduled dirt race that I am inside with Victor Barboza as well as outside with uh, trainer Georgie Delgado and the nine Lady Valentina. Maybe a, a bit of a gutsy single, but I, aside from liking Mochaccino, uh, the drink, uh, Alfredo, I like that filly, and I'm sure as, as she's my single in a $14.40 ticket, I mean, the race she's coming out of at Monmouth was a very strong field. Yes, she, she ran very well, and... Uh, Mr. Todd Pletcher is a specialist in the second start, so yep. I think he's, he's, for me, he's my second pick in that race, but it's to be put in the tickets. Yeah, I gotcha, my friend. All right, we'll talk about the fifth in just a second. We got to get through, though, this upcoming third race field, a two-lifetime three and up Philly and Mayor 6250 claimer that, in the end, may be no more complicated at a short price, mind you, than, uh, than Mika's girl on the rail, who, although dropping down, is first off the claim for Mr. Victor Barboza. Yeah, she ran very well at Gostrin Park West last year. Uh, she won on a man in a special way, uh, wire to wire, and she's working very well, three furlongs in 35 and two, uh, with Emisal Jaramillo leading the race. She's a real danger, but as you said before, the number eight, Lady Valentina, mm -hmm. is a top rival. I don't know what do you think about this AP in the granddaughter, but Jorge Delgado is doing very well with his claiming horses, too. Oh, he's terrific, terrific young trainer. I mean, between Francisco D'Angelo, Caquito, 
right? That's his name? <laughs> yeah. Ho Ma Francisco is his father. Right. And then, oh, it's Jose. Jose. Yeah, Jose F. D'Angelo. Yes. Between the Delgados, the Mirages, and the D'Angelos, Alfred, I think we could run an entire car just with those three racing yes, families. Yes, of course, of course, you are right. So he he's a, he was the champion trainer in Venezuela last year, uh, mm -hmm. Jose D'Angelo. So yes, we are talking about very, very good trainers. Yeah. And Jorge Delgado is coming from a horse racing family also. Yeah, good stock, both those guys, and they're classy young men too, which uh, which is definitely uh, appreciated, much like Victor Barboza, who again has got the favorite and the most likely winner. We can start the late pick five, and not all that late considering it begins in race number four here on this opening Sunday at Gulfstream West. Alfredo's ticket does start in this fourth race, which will go at seven furlongs on the main track, and I see your inside and more so outside to start things out. What do you think? Yes, well, and using two pups, the number five in the last race. It's the first time i using a single in the last race this week. Let's see if the third one is the charm. Uh, I think with Jairo Rendon, this horse on this uh, main track, he has the advantage and he's going to win where to where. Maybe maybe I'm wrong again, but I think uh, today I, I hit in the last one. No, that horse is very, very dangerous. To me, on paper, it's either the two Temple Mount or the number five, uh, two pops going out for trainer Michelle Nihei. Now, you're inside and outside to start things out in this uh, fourth race, <clears throat> the opening leg of the late pick five. And I, speaking of the outside, to me, this race comes down to the turf fillies like Subtle Joy of the Seven and the number two Remarkable Silver against the proven dirt form of the eight Astromelia. And I like the fact that quite simply Astromelia has already run on the dirt against better fields. Yes, and Astromelia in that uh, first start, she, she looks like the winner in the final stretch and she finished second very close to the winner. I think she has a good opportunity today mm -hmm. to take advantage of the surface change. Of course, uh, Sovereign Joy has a good opportunity. She didn't try the main track before. That is the doubt that we have. But I think she's going to run very well. She was my single when the race was on the turf. I know you liked her on the turf, and that would have been a good rematch between her and Remarkable Silver. We had pulled that replay because they were coming out of the same race. Move point now with this one move to the main. So uh, we took different horses, Alfredo, you and I, both towards the outside, 7-8 in, uh, in race number four. Here's the fifth. This is, a, uh, this is a personal highlight of mine on this card here this Sunday afternoon. I, I do like the field, uh, Alfredo, and I like these two-year-old maiden special weights in general. I mean, these are races I like. I like pedigree, and you get the good connections more often than not. And we've got some two-year-old fillies in this Florida bred maiden special weight. And I've already teased it a couple of times, but in looking at the fact that the Pletcher filly in Mochaccino ran just under two months ago and is coming out of a race that produced four next out winners, the first three came back and even the fourth came back, to me, as she drops in against Florida breads for Mr. Pletcher, as you like to say, I think she looks really good. No, she looks very good. I am using both Wardy also. Uh, they, they are uh, sisters, uh, Mocachino and both Wardy, and she looks uh, very sp uh, speedy in, in her first start. And um, Wesley Ward is very effective when he returns his horses to the track, so I uh, use him both in my ticket to, to be sure in this race. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I, I admit that Mocachino has a very good chance to win this race. Yeah, no, absolutely. And Bosworthy, we'll see. I mean, she lost her debut at 1-5 to five back right around Kentucky Derby time here or over at Gulfstream Park was beaten at 30 cents that day by a good filly who unfortunately went to the sidelines and saw it as a rock. But her second start wasn't all that great. We'll see. She's had about 13 weeks between races for Wesley Ward. And will she be one of these Wesley Ward fillies that even though she was probably, I mean, razor sharp back in May to win first out because that's his game. We'll see if she's able to come off a layoff in lifetime start number three. That's the matchup there in that upcoming Sunday fifth. Let's move on to the six, my friend. We've got a uh, five-horse field going five furlongs on the main track. Naturally, we are off the turf here as we have these three and up Philly Amare thirty-five to thirty thousand dollar claimers. Uh, I'm a fan of Trader Carlos David, and you like him here with his horse, the Seven Distinctly Blue. Yes, Distinctly Blue. She's very fast, and she has very good races uh, on the main track, especially in, in these short distances. So with Hyro Rendon. I expect no 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 finals to see her at in the lead from the very beginning, but the number eight, no se vende. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what that means? No, I was gonna say, what does that translate to? Uh, it doesn't sell. It doesn't sell. 
Well, sell us on No Se Vende. What do you like about her? Well, I like her because she ran very good in the, in the in the previous racing against a tough competition, and she has a speed to track Distinctive Blue and maybe upset her. Okay. She's from the outside. She'll have Luca Panici. Uh, Safi, though, meanwhile, has the three fightress off a, a trainer change, and this is a pretty well-traveled uh, Tapazar filly who began her career in Kentucky, went to Saratoga last summer, back to Kentucky, and that's basically been her, her stomping grounds, if you will, with the exception of her last start on the turf at Indiana Grand. I like her. Not only is she first-time Safi, who tends to move up horses off the claim or off trader changes she's got dirt races going back i mean obviously alfredo uh, would you agree her dirt races were pretty good earlier in her career yes maybe she's going to take the lead also let's see how a lot she of speed there that's the thing yeah no there's a lot what i find fascinating about this race because on paper i see you picked the seven i was between the three and seven but when i look at fightress distinctly blue and even no se vende all three of them have speed. I mean, yeah. they could all basically hook up across the track out of the gate. Basically, the race is going to be decided who adapts better yeah. to the track. Yeah, well said there, my friend. That's your sixth race field, field of five, and not not uh, not shy in the early speed department on paper for sure. Here's the uh, seventh. This will go as our, as our feature and a uh, pretty good crew here. And we've seen, Alfredo, a bunch of very good claims on this circuit throughout 2019, even as recent as Thursday with Tiger Blood, who, I mean, what do you think of Tiger Blood for, for Stephen Lily Caceres? He's a nice horse. Yes, he was at the bottom in the claiming races, and now he's running Allowens and winning uh, very good races. Definitely. It seems on the cusp of being a legit turf sprint stakes horse. You know what I mean? Yes. Claiming crown type horse. And I do get a similar, different race and different surface, naturally, but a similar vibe in looking at the four, uh, four horse Royal Asher, who was claimed uh, near the bottom for 12500 by trainer Gustavo Delgado back during the winter time towards the end of February, and she turned into just a, a machine for him. And in fact, her big two race win streak for Gustavo culminated in this race right around Preakness time. I think this was Preakness week, maybe even Preakness Eve on Friday or Thursday, May 16th. And there's not much to see here other than her destroying this field and how do you feel about her coming back off a, a layoff of about 70 days this afternoon no, she's not having any trouble with that Gustavo Delgado is a very good trainer and this Royal Usher she finished seven less behind Stormy Embrace that she's running in the Breeders Cup so yeah. the Royal Usher is a tough a tough beat I believe so I I agree uh, would you simply say there's a good chance she is the class of the field here Apparently, and she has also the speed to do it. Yes. From wire to wire. Now, she'll knock heads. The funny thing about this race, or interesting thing, is you've got Royal Asher off that 71-day layoff, and that's the same layoff out of the same exact race here, July 27th in the added elegance with Flora Fantasy, who's also going out for a good trainer in Efren Loza Jr. And this is a filly, or mare in this case, by Cowtown Cat, who really got good with Efren earlier this year. Yes, and she's running well every race that she tries, so she's a danger because she's going to track the speed, and if Royal Asher is not doing his stuff at the uh, her stuff at the in the final stretch. Maybe she can win the race. And I like the number three too. I like that that pick, Ula Gal. I was going to talk about Ula Gal, and I'm glad you approve. She is at a crossroads. I think that's the best way to put it. If she's going to show some life here and be competitive at this level, and hopefully run somewhere in the vicinity of her good races last summer when she was a three-year-old in 2018. I think this is going to be the spot. If she still wants to do it, this is a race her true colors can come out. Uh, they tried her on the turf a couple of times. I'm not going to hold those races against her. And at this stage of the game, I'm wondering if a mile, just not really what she wants to do. And with her turning back to six furlongs, I think She's got enough going on recently where if she still wants to be a racehorse, cutting back to uh, six furlongs this afternoon might just wake her up. Yes, and Ula Gal is three for, uh, for four in six furlongs. Yes. She's very effective in this distance. 
She is a good a good opportunity for a long shot in the front. Yeah, she's going to be a price because, again, she has not looked anywhere near the same kind of horse she was a little over a year ago on this circuit. Uh, she's my little sneaky price play, but again, Alfredo and I like the favorite Royal Asher. has just been a great claim. Race number eight does how is your late pick five single, my friend, and we'll cap this closing uh, opening week, I should say, at GPW with a field of eight uh, going five furlongs off the turf at a two-lifetime $10,000 claimer. Uh, the dirt races of late, or even the races in general of late, for your top pick and your single, the 5 2 pops, they have been pretty good. And this could be a pretty good field for this horse. Yes, he has a speed and he ran very well the last time on a main track. Uh, that was at Gulfstream Park. But you know, Jairo Rendon is a specialist to, like Jaramillo, to run at the at the top of the race, at yeah. leading the race from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And he's a son of First Samurai, and First Samurai is producing very good runners. Yeah, like First Samurai, good horse, uh, Breeders' Cup Juvenile winner, a long, long, long time ago. I think that was back in 2000, 2005 at Belmont. You remember watching that Breeders' Cup though on TV? I think so. Yeah, well, I'm not sure. <laughs> that was uh, that was the year St. Liam won the Classic, and I was fortunate enough to be there. Last time the Breeders' Cup was held at Belmont, unfortunately. But anyway, you got two pops for Michelle Nihe by First Samurai with High Row. Uh, Temple Mount, the two, my top pick, has got Miguel. It's getting a trainer change, one good barn to another. Um, but I do like Juan Sevilla. And this horse is, I mean, this colt, his dirt races, I got I got no problem with them. In a field like this, his dirt races from this past spring, no problem here. Yes, he, he ran very well also. Uh, Temple City is not a stallion for horses on the dirt, but he particularly ran very well. So yeah, he's already won on the dirt. You have so a good shot with this horse. Exactly. I like him. All right, good. I'm glad you approve of that horse. Let's try to get Ula Gal. All right, she's my price play, I like my it. friend. I like it. All right, I miss good. her. I miss her in my ticket. All right, well... <laughs> You can always you can always add her. I okay. think we're gonna make that. We're gonna we're gonna add Ula Gal on your uh, late pick five, and of course, great job, uh, Alfredo, all week Thank long. You. Yeah, you and Claudia, great job for sure. We'll have you back next week. Yes, yes, we, we 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 will have more Spanish stuff here. <laughs> all right, and I am still everybody brushing up on my uh, my Espanol. Uh, Pete Aiello needs no brushing up. Man is always on his game, and he of course is standing by. He's got those GPW Sunday scratches and changes coming up in just a few moments.